Andrew, wonderful to see you again. We were just saying uh, from Tokyo to Beijing, here in the City of Light, you're calling these the most spectacular games ever. Why? It's a combination of factors. First of all, Paralympic sport is stronger than ever before. So we have seen in the last three years, this was a shorter cycle. Uh, the performances of the athletes, it's sport as, like never before. It's the, there is the Paris factor. This is an incredible city, you know, iconic. Well, Venus, very close to iconic places, like playing football in front of the Eiffel Tower, the Grand Palais with Paratekwondo, which are fancy, Paraquestern in Versailles, and so on and so forth. So it's just, it, yeah, and what we learn from the Olympics also is the atmosphere. So it's not that uh, we will have full stadia, we will have an incredible atmosphere. Uh, and, and we saw how Parisians and French people, they were proud, happy, excited, energetic about the fact that the games are here. And during the Olympics, I was talking to people, and now during the, that we are here for the Paralympics, you hear the excitement towards our games here. So, I, you know, I just can't wait to, to, to the opening ceremony. So this, you know, promises an incredible, uh, let's say, spectacular games, but also games with impact. We have more broadcasters than ever before. We have more countries than ever before. We have more media representatives than ever before. So this shows that whatever happens in the field of play, and it's going to be an incredible sport, it will impact more countries, more people around the world. And that's where we want to position ourselves, the most transformational sport event on the planet. Uh, I arrived July 15th. I was delighted to see the Egitos on the Arc de Triomphe, maybe even before the rings went up. Uh, it's symbolic, no doubt, but that's a big move, is it not? I think this is very ambitious organizing committee and uh, I, I gave a lot of interviews together with Tony Estanguet and I heard in, in his good French, ambition, ambition, ambition. And they have been very ambitious. And I think the Aguitas on the Arc de Triomphe, is, it's, it's a symbol of that. At the beginning of the Olympics, Paralympics, you have the both symbols in the, in the Arc de Triomphe and the Eiffel Tower, and they stay until the end of the Paralympics. That's commitment. That's a new uh, way of promoting both games as one single thing, Paris 2024, because what unites them, it's Paris 2024. So I think they have been doing some great things ceremonies outside of the stadium, a new approach to the Olympics, Paralympics, and of course we heard like the chair of the organizing committee promoting uh, the Paralympics at the closing of the Olympic Games. So this is just great. And I think it, it, it reemphasized the level of the partnership that both movements have, Olympics and Paralympics. I've been thinking about this personal journey for you, navigating the past two Paralympics, and we had conversations and there were challenges. Yeah. They're calling these the Renaissance Games. Maybe for you too. How are you feeling going into this, knowing that there's going to be the electricity around all of this? Well, from a personal perspective, it's just unbelievable, incredible. It's electrifying. I can't wait for the opening ceremony. Because, yes, my first games as president were the Winter Games in Pyeongchang. Very good games, but of course, the Summer Games are much bigger. And then we go into Tokyo. We were super excited. Huge interest from the Japanese people, media, everyone. And then COVID hits. Of course, Beijing with all the, the with COVID, but still with some the political uh, uh, atmosphere that was not very positive at that, at that point in time. So these games is a different movement. Still, we have the political uh, background, which is complicated. But with the spectators back, with an incredible city, everyone really anxious to to these games. Everyone, you know, it's like a renaissance. It's like we will have people back. We will have incredible venues, incredible sport. We will be together as a movement. I think I, I will visit the village a couple of times and to see the excitement of the people just being together without masks, without being, you know, having all those, those limitations. It's just incredible. The, the vibe and the atmosphere in the village is just unbelievable. And there's chocolate muffins there. Chocolate muffins. Uh, <laughs> it's also unbelievable. It's really good. I had my doubts and people say, you have to try it. I did, and my mistake was doing it in front of my uh, of a camera crew uh, of the IPC, but it's unbelievable. And yesterday I went to the village again, and I brought two muffins back to my hotel. So you are stocked and ready, carb loading for the games. Look, I probably <laughs> will have to visit my tailor after the games because my suits will not fit me uh, because of the muffins, but uh, it will be worth it. Uh, you have always understood in all of our conversations a greater calling. You, uh, you talk about the impact in cities and in countries. 
Uh, Paris, we know, was not the most accessible city seven years ago, but my goodness, have there been changes. You see it all over the streets. I love what they've done with the accessible schools, I believe, within a 15-minute walk of any neighborhood here. Talk about impact in a place where they didn't think about accessibility in the early days of this country. Look, I think in seven years, we cannot fix centuries of, of, of neglect. But we like, and we like to compare not cities with different cities, but we like to compare 2024 Paris with 2017 Paris. And they have really, they really took the opportunity to stage these games to, to the maximum extent. Uh, legacy on the transport system. So, you know, 100% of the bus fleet is accessible. The trams are accessible. Uh, we have specific uh, uh, measures for the games, like the 1,000 accessible taxis. In the education, you know, 15 minutes from any Parisian with a disability, there will be an inclusive school. So it's up to the, to the parents to, to make decisions. Do I want my kid in an inclusive school or not? If they say yes, 15 minutes. Uh, as the Club Inclusive, which is an amazing initiative, 3,000 sport clubs in France made accessible for persons with disability, not only on the, let's say, on the architectural side. It's not only about eliminating physical barriers, it's training the coaches, training the PE teachers, so to how to welcome persons with disabilities. These are not the top athletes, probably these, this is not the people going to the Paralympics. These are persons with disabilities who have the right to practice sport, and finally, mm -hmm. they will be exercising those rights. Wonderful. You and I have talked a lot about barriers to Paralympic sport. One of the things that was, you know, that caught my attention, Andrew, was uh, the increase of uh, females competing in the Paralympics, and it's a historic number here in Paris, 45% of the 4,400 athletes. What's your sense on why there's been such a gap, and what's been happening to close it? Well, there are some explanations when it comes to the population of persons with disability, like, you know, the male population is more uh, subject to violence, uh, accidents like mm -hmm. car crashes and so on and so so in terms of people acquiring a disability let's say uh, let the male pop probably we have m bigger numbers on the men's side than on the women's side but it doesn't matter we uh, want to work to to, to the 50 50 percent we are planning to achieve that in brisbane 2032 so we are happy with the 45 percent we'll be growing steadily the number of females uh, female athletes since beijing 2008 45% is good, but it's not enough. Uh, we want to 50-50 and we're working towards that, that, uh, that ratio. Last question. Uh, I love what Chuck Aoki said. He said, watching the Olympics is like being invited to a party, but it's not yours. And now our party has arrived. Your words, you said they're going to surprise, dazzle, and excite. What are you looking forward to at Paris 2024? Exactly that, to, right. to inspire, right. to dazzle. Uh, and to people to understand that I mean, the future of sport is the intersection between entertainment and purpose. They are going to put an incredible show, the Paralympic athletes. Sport will be exciting, thrilling. Uh, the first reaction to anyone to Paralympic sport is, oh, I didn't thought this was possible. It's a surprise. We don't want in the future to surprise people anymore because we want everyone to already anticipate that this is going to be fantastic. But the purpose bit is important because you're watching an incredible, I don't know, wheelchair rugby final. You know, you're thrilled, you know, you're, oh, what is going on? But you know that what is happening there changes lives. Mm. And this is really important. Not only of the athletes in the field of play, people on the stands, people back home. And we want that the legacy of the games, uh, you can feel it, the impact of the games, not only, let's say, in Paris and France, but at a global level. We want what will happen here in Paris affects the life of persons with disability in Guatemala, mm. in Burundi, uh, in Vietnam, in Brazil, why not? Good luck with the games, Andrew. I Thank always you. appreciate the time. Bon chance. Uh, merci. merci beaucoup, mon ami. Merci beaucoup.